Okay, so shall we start? Yes, sorry, wait. That's okay. No, you're not late. It's <laughs> seven thirty. Okay, so now we're down to business. So we know what is the category we want to study. So today I will discuss matrix coefficients of Harish Chandra modules. I mean, the talks I gave yesterday were just motivation for the definition of Harish Chandra modules, and you can consider this that this is now a clean problem. So we are going to define a, a problem, a precise category, and try to describe uh, problems related to this category. So let me uh, remind you of the definition of Harish Chandra modules. So, Pi V is a Harish Chandra module I mean, V is a linear space, pi will be the label of our action. If first uh, it is a module of or, or the enveloping algebra of uh, complexified Lie algebra of our group, second statement is that it is a representation of K. Yeah, let me just remind you. G is SL2, R, and K is maximal compact. So this is, in this case, group of two by two orthogonal matrices of determinant one. In general, G, for the definition, G can be any semi-simple uh, Lie group and K is corresponding maximal compact subgroup. So G is complexify Lie algebra of our group uh, G. So, so this Harishchandra module is also a representation of K, and of course we have to make this more specific. So it's direct sum of subspaces Vn and goes over the integers where dimension of Vn is finite. So this is our admissibility condition. And K acts by representation tau n on Vn, where tau n is the representation which says rotation cosine phi, sine phi, minus sine phi, cosine phi into e to the i and phi. And the third condition was the compatibility. And uh, let me just spell it out. If we look at this Lie algebra, it's, uh, 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 at this group of rotations, its Lie algebra is generated by this element, which I la uh, labeled X. And uh, this X, of course, its action corresponding to tau n is equal to the multiplication with i n. I mean, I just differentiate this. So we want that this x acts on v n by multiplication with i n, but this x also is an element of the enveloping algebra u of g, so it inherits 
some action coming from the action pi. So what we compatibility means that pi x restricted to Vn is In. I mean, this was our definition of Harish Chandra module from last time, and this is now completely spelled out. And then, of course, we have a category of Harish Chandra modules, which I will denote by M, G, K, where the objects are Harish Chandra modules and morphisms, uh, linear maps between, say, uh, Harish Chandra modules, uh, which intertwine both actions. And uh, I mean, this is a very nice abelian category, and we want to study this category. Okay, so the, the first thing I want to remark is, remember, we are mimicking the theory based on the theory of, say, finite dimensional uh, representations of finite groups or, say, compact groups. And there, we had the operation of taking contragredient of representation. So I want to point out that such construction exists for Harish Chandra modules. So let's take a Harish Chandra module pi v and let's look at v star, it's, it's linear dual. So the space of all linear forms on <coughs> v. And then I can look at all these linear transformations I have on v. So corresponding to the elements of the Lie algebra and corresponding to k, I can take their adjoints and I can define the action of, say, Lie algebra on the dual space, say, pi star of an element, say, C of the Lie algebra G as taking negative, I mean, this is just to get a representation of the Lie algebra, is, can you check, uh, pi C star, so uh, this is the uh, adjoint of that linear map pi star, so, and also I can define the action of k, that pi star of k is equal to pi k inverse uh, adjoint. In this way, the linear dual becomes a u of g and k module, but because in general this is infinite sum, then when you look at the dual space, it will be too big. So V star is not, not a Harish Chandra module. But if, if I look at V star, then inside V star, I can take the linear dual of Vn. So I can look at Vn star. Yes? What's going on here? So k, little k here is an element of, of the group. Capital k, right? Here we're dealing with like a k, the group k action by pi as well. I mean, this is, this is the action on the space V, and I take the adjoint because yeah, when. Little k here is not in the group, obviously. Here, no, no, this is, let's see, my. This is, this is a Latin lowercase k. Yeah. Sorry, I, yeah. This wasn't clear where, what we were defining. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay, I mean, I, I, I'm sure maybe Vincent know, knows better Gothic alphabet than me. <laughs> I mean, this, uh, so, yeah, I mean, this is, this is the element of the, of the group K, and uh, this uh, putting inverse here uh, uh, us that we get the right type of action. So, is this clear? Yeah, okay. 
So this, if I look at the linear dual of this space, I can extend the elements by zero to the rest of V, to the other sum, and so I get a natural inclusion here, and then I have in V star, I have an inclusion of the sum of Vn stars, and goes over Z, and this is, this is the remark I was making, that this direct sum is much smaller of V star, because, I mean, think about this, this is a linear space, which is, these guys are, uh, say, you can view them as they're one-dimensional, the linear dual is just product of infinitely many uh, one-dimensional subspaces, and I'm taking just in this product, I'm taking uh, direct sum, and uh, it's easy, so this is basically k finite uh, subspace of V star, so this is a, this algebraic sum is the set of all vectors in V star, which under the action given by pi star generate finite dimensional subspaces. If I take a vector, generate its orbit, uh, makes its orbit and span, I will get a finite dimensional subspace. This subspace is what's easy to check is invariant under these two actions. And uh, K acts on this by a representation corresponding corresponding to negative n, because you see on Vn I have the action e to the i n phi. When I apply star, then I'm inverting this element, so the action is e to negative i n phi. So this is, I denote this algebraic sum as V twiddle, so this is this space, and if I take V twiddle, minus N is exactly this piece here. So I have this equality, so I am getting, I define pi twiddle is the restriction of pi star to V twiddle, and in this way I get pi twiddle V twiddle, which is a Harish Chandra module. So this is basically an exercise I just sketched for you. It is Harish Chandra module because of the construction and because of this fact that this V minus N twiddle is a linear dual of this space, which is finite dimensional, so the linear dual is also finite dimensional, so this condition is just uh, follows from that, and uh, so one and the two is what I explain, and compatibility is obvious, it comes from the uh, from the compatibility on V. So this is, this Harish Chandra module is called the contragradient of, of pi V, and uh, it corresponds to the notion of a contragradient representation of the group in the case of finite dimensional representations. And uh, now, if you look at the construction, I mean, first of all, if I have some short exact sequence, uh, say, okay, you, of uh, Harish Chandra modules, I apply the contragradient, you will see that this is a contravariant functor, so, uh, it uh, changes the direction of errors, but it's otherwise exact. So if this is exact, then this is exact. 
And uh, moreover, if I apply contra gradient to contra gradient, if I do this twice, then I recover a module which is isomorphic to the original one. And again, let me stress, because I think Rishi asked this question yesterday, the critical remark here, why is the second dual, second contragradient isomorphic to original, is that these isotypic components, Vns are finite dimensional. So this is the, the critical condition, so you know that uh, second dual of finite dimensional uh, space is uh, canonically isomorphic to original. So basically elementary linear algebra forces this contragradient operation to be anti-equivalence of categories. No, I mean actually this, this is uh, duality. This implies that, that actually if I do this, this is actually equivalence. And uh, I mean this is just a side remark, but this operation pi v into pi twiddle v twiddle because of that is called Harishchandra duality. So on the category of Harishchandra modules, which we define, we have a nice duality operation with the property that it is uh, exact contravariant functor and the square of the functor is isomorphic to the identity. Any questions? Yeah. No, I mean this is this guy here. This is just the issue of labeling. This is the dual space of Vn. On Vn, K acts by this representation here. But you see, when, I, when we define the dual action, we put this inverse here. So if you look at the natural action of K on the dual space, it's labeled not by N, but by this negative N, because of this inverse. So this is, uh, I mean, let me stress, this is critical observation, that this is minus n of this contragradient representation. Okay, so now let's go to, to the topic Peter discussed for finite groups. Now I want to define the notion of matrix coefficients. See, it's a little bit tricky because, and I will give you a definition which won't look very motivating at the beginning, but then show examples because there is no group ac action on Harishchandra module, so it's kind of surprising that you can define matrix coefficients. So remember that matrix coefficients were in uh, Peter's formulation, we look at a tensor product of the dual, say, gradient representation and representation itself. So let me just look at this structure for a moment. So V is our Harishchandra module, V twiddle is its contragradient. I can form a tensor product over C, and then I claim 
that on this there is a natural action of G cross G and K cross K. First of all, let me just first take care of the K action because, uh, K cross K action. So, if I have two elements of the group K, so K1 and K2, and I have to define the action on a generic element in the tensor product, so it's enough to consider these products of two vectors, so I mean it's clear what to do. We apply pi twiddle of k1 on v twiddle and we apply pi of k2 on v. And this gives me the action of the product of two copies of k on the tensor product. So this is exactly, if you look at notes from Peter's class, this is exactly uh, what was going on there. But now, I mean, I have to think a little bit, I mean, of course, if you studied uh, representations of Lie algebras, then you know what to do. But remember, representation of the Lie algebra is obtained by differentiating representation of the group when I, when you uh, differentiate this, you are using basically product rule, so the definition of the action of the product of Lie algebras is, say, let's take two elements, T1 and T2, where Ti is in my Lie algebra, and how I define the action of V twiddle tensor with V, I just first have pi twiddle of T1, V twiddle, tensor V, because I'm, I'm essentially differentiating a formula like this, so I'm differentiating this term, and of course here putting one, so I suggest the Lie algebra acts on the first coordinate plus the other half of formula is V twiddle, tensor pi uh, T2 apply to B. And I mean it's easy to check that this is actually a representation of the Lie algebra G cross G. Okay, so this is what we do on the tensor product and we don't care about uh, finer properties of this module, but then remember in finite dimensional case to this, uh, uh, we were mapping this into functions on the group. I mean, this, were, this map in the case of finite dimensional representations, we would take this and map, say, an element V twiddle tensor with V into matrix coefficient, uh, uh, say, V twiddle linear form applied to the vector pi x, okay, let's put this blank because this was a function v. So this was the assignment of these matrix coefficients. In the case of finite groups, we take a vector, apply the, uh, the action of the group, and then evaluate a linear form on it. So this is, so here we are going from this into space of functions on the group. So, so let me uh, see how we are going to do this here. The matrix coefficient map will go from this space into the space of smooth functions on a group G. On the space of smooth functions, you have two regular representations, right and left regular representation, as in the case of finite group. So I'm assuming that these are smooth functions, so I can differentiate these actions, and I get corresponding actions uh, by, uh, uh, by the Lie algebra. 
on those functions obtained by differentiation of the regular action. So I can say that if I have, uh, I mean, this is now more or less formal. So let me state first for k1 and k2 act on some function f in the following way that I will have the left action by k1 because this guy is on the left, right action by k2 apply to f, left and right action commute because in one case I am moving the function by a translation on one side, in the other case on the other side is commute. So the order here is completely irrelevant and then I differentiate this corresponding formula and I have T1 and say T2, two elements of the Lie algebra of G act on a smooth function F by say I have a similar formula. Like there I look at the le left action of the element of Lie algebra T1 on F plus the right action of T2 of F and uh, so this is analogous to this formula and uh, <coughs> this gives me again a structure of G cross G, K cross K module on smooth functions in the group. And uh, the matrix coefficient map is a homomorphism C from V twiddle tensor with V into C infinity of G. Of course, not an arbitrary one. What else do we, do we need to assume? So, so yeah, let me write the definition. The, so, so let's put first A matrix coefficient map C is uh, G cross G, K cross K homomorphism such that we have an additional condition for that for any V in V and V twiddle in V twiddle we have that the obvious thing. So if I, I can, for these two vectors, I can look at C of V twiddle tensor V. And uh, this is a function I can evaluate at the identity I w and I want that this is the same thing as taking this linear form V twiddle and evaluating it on a vector V. Of course, if I want to have something which looks like a matrix coefficient map, it better satisfy this property. Okay, let me uh, give you the example. Of course, this example is how one is led to this definition and you shouldn't think, except in motivating the definition, you shouldn't think about this. Uh, because I really want to view this matrix coefficient map in this, in the setting of Harishchandra modules. But remember how we got Harishchandra modules. So let's look for a moment at an example of a Banach space admissible representation pi V of the group G. So, 
So this is a miscible representation on G on a Banach space X. And remember, in this case, uh, oh, uh, uh, let's see, let me put X here, yeah, because uh, I don't want that we are mixed up with this. So this is a Banach space. This Banach space contains the space of K finite vectors, which is some algebraic sum of X n's, n goes over Z, and the action of the enveloping algebra and the action of K on this space is, uh, gives us the corresponding Harish Chandra module. In this case, when we have the action of the group, I can take V to be an element in X, you know, say one of uh, this uh, X ends. I can take V twiddle to be a K finite linear form on uh, uh, X, and in this case, I can define C of V twiddle tensor with V at the point G to be equal the linear form V twiddle evaluated on pi G of V. So this is, this is just the matrix coefficient in classical sense. We are taking a vector, we are applying the action of our group, this vector, and we get a function with values in the space X. We evaluate the linear form on this function, so we get a, a number depending on, on G. So, so this C V twiddle tensor with V is actually a function on the group G. Now, remember that we discussed last time that all the vectors here are actually analytic vectors. So my V is an analytic vector. So this is uh, a function which is analytic in G. When I evaluate with twiddle, I get an analytic function on the group. In particular, I get a smooth function on the group. So really this function is in this space. And now, of course, because this function is a function on the group, I mean I can look at the action of the Lie algebra on analytic vectors coming from Harish Chandra modules and also on K finite linear forms. And if you look at this action and differentiate them, and this is a good exercise which I suggest that you do, then you can easily check that this map C satisfies this property. So basically, if you study this example, then you can easily see that this map I define by this formula is a matrix coefficient map for the underlying uh, Harish Chandra module. So let me repeat this. If I have a group representation, yes. Uh, do all uh, matrix coefficient map from this group? Yes. I mean, this is. Yes, I mean, uh, I am, first of all, we don't know if a matrix coefficient map exists. No, 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 but for an arbitrary Harish Chandra module, I mean, this is, we don't know if every Harish Chandra module comes for, from a group representation. Or, okay, maybe this was your question. And the, the answer to that question is yes. I mean, this is what I'm going to discuss now, but it is not obvious. But from the definition itself, it's far from clear that for an arbitrary Harish Chandra module, such a map exists because it's, 
it's uh, some analytic gadget attached to an algebraic object, so it doesn't have to exist. So this is, the, I mean, this is actually a very good question, and we are going to discuss this now, but you should v view this just as a, uh, a motivating example that this notion makes sense. And, uh, I have an yeah. If they are not k-finite vectors, then of course, as, as we discussed in, in this example, then the function doesn't have to be uh, smooth. So you won't be able to... I mean, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's only a question of smoothness because, among other things, because uh, you cannot de define the, the action of, of, the, of the Lie algebra. So but I mean, there are other, other c questions which are important because basically you want to analyze matrix coefficient map and we are going to, to use K finite mess in the properties of Harish Chandra modules in an essential way. Of course, you can, you can modify your definition, but you will have to modify a lot of theory. At the moment, we, we can do whatever we want because we are not claiming anything yet. Yes. No, 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 no. This is just a K finite linear form. But I could take a kill. I mean, this is just a motivation. I'm not. Uh, you see, this is this is an example. I don't want that you think a lot about just because. I mean, th when you raise this issue, yeah, let's. I mean, very often, I mean, if you look at Kasselman's examples, there you can have a Hilbert space inner product. On your space, you can have a, a Banach space version of this. You can have, say, Frechet space version of this. And in all these cases, these spaces of K finite vectors will be the same. And the matrix coefficient map will be the same but this functional analytic completion will differ, and this is what, what, in this approach, we want to avoid. Okay, so now let's, uh, let's discuss uh, more precisely these issues uh, Rishi and uh, uh, Matvey raised. So let's uh, consider uh, what are act what we can say about these matrix coefficients? So what I want to do uh, in the rest of today's talk, I don't know how far I will get, but definitely in, in the afternoon, I'm uh, going to show that matrix coefficients satisfy certain uh, differential equations, and from Studying those differential equations, we can prove some of their properties. For example, one of the properties we are going to establish, and I will use it at the moment before I raise this example, because I already mentioned this, we are going to show that any matrix coefficient map lands not only in smooth functions, but actually in real analytic functions. This is, of course, if you look at this example, this is clear because V is an analytic vector. So this is an analytic function, so th this thing is an analytic function. So matrix coefficient maps are given by their Taylor series. I mean, this is what I care about. And let's see what this implies. So let's, I will leave the definition. So using this remark, I will convince you that the Harish Chandra module can have only one matrix coefficient map, at most one. So let's calculate, um, I mean, if this is an analytic function, I can write it down using Taylor series around identity. So there will be 
I have my group, and I look at its Lie algebra, which, I mean, okay, it's the real Lie algebra, which s sits in complex Lie algebra, and uh, uh, in a certain neighborhood in, of zero in the Lie algebra, which I will denote by u, I, my matrix coefficient will be given by its Taylor series. So let me calculate this CV twiddle tensor with V at, say, x of some element of Lie algebra T. I can write as a sum n goes from zero to infinity and one over n factorials. I mean, this uh, T is left invariant vector field, so I can look at its powers Tn acting on this function Cv twiddle tensor with V evaluated at identity. So this is just Taylor formula. I mean, this is, these are the derivatives of my matrix coefficient map, and I just write down Taylor expansion, and I have this formula. Now, I have to uh, think what this thing is. These, these are left, in, uh, Lie algebra is given by left invariant vector fields, so the action is given by differentiating the right regular action. So if I write this using my formulas, I can first rewrite this in a form, n goes from zero to infinity, one over n factorials, rt to the n c v twiddle tensor with v evaluated at one. But now remember that the matrix coefficient map is a g cross g homomorphism, so if I act on functions by a right regular action, so this is the action of the second variable, this is the same as acting on V with this. So I can rewrite this using this property here. I mean, this is the critical... Um, yeah. I mean, this is a function, and uh, my, vec uh, my Lie element of Lie algebras are considered as vector fields on a group. So I can apply a vector field to a function. I mean, uh, I, okay, I think, I mean, I if, Yes. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, C itself is not a function just when I evaluate on this. Okay. So, so I, I hope that adding these brackets and, and of course, uh, here then I should also put two extra brackets. So, I mean, the transition from here to here is just uh, uh, to conform to the notation of this action on C infinity G. So I didn't do anything here except rewriting the definition differently. And now this, using the fact that, now this is critical, uh, situation when I'm using the properties of matrix coefficient map to move this inside. So this will be C of V twiddle tensor. So this is the action in the second factor by, uh, by the element of Lie algebra T n times. So this is pi of T to the n V evaluated at one. And now you just have to stare into this formula. Oh, oh, yeah. Okay, now, no, I will use this. As, sorry, one more step. 
Now I can evaluate this. See, what is this? This is a matrix coefficient map of these two vectors evaluated at, at identity. So this is the sum. N goes from 0 to infinity. 1 over N factorials V twiddle evaluated at pi T to the N V. OK, so now, yeah. No, I, I said that I said I, I am going to prove that the matrix coefficients are real analytic. So I'm assuming this at the moment so that because I want to tell you something about matrix coefficients before my lecture is over. So I took a neighborhood where the function is given by Taylor series. So I am assuming, I am assuming that matrix coefficient map is analytic, and I took a small neighborhood of zero where actually the function is given by Taylor series. So yes, I want that this is an equality. I mean, this is crucial. But now I want you to concentrate on this expression. This expression here, what does it involve? It involves only the action of the Harish Chandra module. I have this vector v and I apply the action of the vector uh, element of the Lie algebra n times. So this is completely determined by the action of Harish Chandra module. So I can calculate this from my Harish Chandra module action and then this converges and gives me my matrix coefficient map. So this says that on this set U, and if I want in the group G, the set U maps into some open neighborhood of identity in the group G. On this set, the matrix coefficient map on all the uh, group elements of this form is uniquely determined by the action of, on the Harish Chandra module. On the other hand, our so this tells me that there is a neighborhood of identity in the group when the matrix coefficient of these two vectors is uniquely determined. Uh, let's assume that we have two matrix coefficient maps. And uh, both of them will be given by this formula on this neighborhood. So I have two analytic functions which agree on an open set. If uh, if two analytic sac uh, functions agree on an open set, then they have to agree on the connected component of the set. But our group, SL2, is connected. So I see that these two, two, pos uh, two matrix coefficients actually have to be equal. So what I proved to you now is the following theorem. I mean, this is a half of, I mean, a small half of a theorem uh, which says that a Harish Chandra module pi v has at most one matrix coefficient map. So in this way, we can call it the Harish, uh, the matrix coefficient map. Of pi v. So you see, we started with a completely algebraic object, and we now prove that this to this completely algebraic object, we can attach an analytic gadget, the matrix coefficient map, which is uniquely determined by the algebraic object and which uh, reconstructs this group action information. We had this in, in this example. Okay, so 
Now, the natural question is, does matrix coefficient map exist? And uh, this is definitely more difficult than this statement, but there is the following theorem. which I'm going to prove which is due to Castleman, which says every Harishchandra module has a matrix coefficient. And uh, <coughs> say we could put here unique. So this is, of course, that part, the easy part we we already proved. Do you want to answer this question? <laughs> I yeah. <laughs> Actually, I I think the answer is yes because. No, no, the, the answer is yes, that the people were excited because, uh, yeah, okay, L let me tell you some history about uh, this. So Harish Chandra, in one of his early papers, and uh, this is what we are going to reprove at least once, proved the following statement. If you take an irreducible Harish Chandra module, then this irreducible Harish Chandra module lives in some explicitly constructed group representation as a subquotient. I mean, th this was so-called subquotient theorem. And what I think today, either Bill or I, one of us, will prove is a stronger form, so-called subrepresentation theorem, which says that actually any reducible Harish-Chandra module sits inside so-called principal series, which are a, a genuine group representation, which is uh, constructed by making this construction explicit. So the answer was known for irreducible representations. But Harishchandra modules are not like, say, representations of finite groups. They're not semi-simple. Again, uh, you s could see this in Bill's talk on the first day, in Peter's talk yesterday, that uh, the extension problem of irreducible Harish-Chandra modules is complicated. So this was definitely something uh, which was not understood. And uh, I think uh, the definitely people were thinking about this. And, uh, and I, I think uh, knowing uh, uh, a clean and obvious answer to this uh, question was an uh, exciting news. Yeah. I think people didn't have any expectation one way or the other, but maybe they might have had, but the extension problem is really easy to reduce. Uh, And uh, I mean, and of course, you have to uh, 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 be aware that we are discussing mathematical archaeology now. That at that time, when say when Harish Chandra was proving subrepresentation theory, homological algebra was just being developed. I think uh, Cartan Eilenberg was published more or less at the same time. So. So these ideas of studying extensions is, were very murky. So, so even when I uh, first time went to the institute and started uh, uh, learning representation theory, I mean, people, most of the people were not 
thinking uh, uh, in those terms and uh, at least most hardcore representation theorists, I think Bill's advantage was that he was coming into real groups from a different uh, field. I mean, people were obsessed with the issue of unitary representations and they thought that uh, non-trivial extensions are perversion, not something natural to study. So, th so there was a, a ideological component also involved. Okay, so my time, let me see if I think, uh, Okay, so, yeah, may, maybe actually this is, uh, I wanted to finish by explaining how one gets the differential equation, but uh, maybe uh, it's better to postpone this for the afternoon because then I will be uh, writing those differential equations explicitly and studying them. So this is a natural place to stop and anyway, there. Just two minutes left. Any other questions? Okay, so if not, that's it.